Uh, Mr. Bolden, I, I, I'm sure you still meet the uh, remark that um, what are the Negroes, why aren't they optimistic? Um, and I, again, I apologize and preface this by the phrase the Negroes because for want of a better phrase, if you'll allow me, uh, they say, but it's getting so much better. There are Negro mayors. There's Negroes in all, all of sports. Uh, there are Negroes in, in politics. There, um, is it at once getting much better and still hopeless? Well, I don't think there's much hope for it, you know, to tell you the truth. You know, as long as people are using this peculiar language. That's a, that's a very vivid question for me, you know. But, it, but the real question is what's going to happen to this country? I have to repeat that. Now, if Negroes, you know, don't seem to be very optimistic, it's not because they suddenly all changed from the happy, shift, you know, shiftless, dancing darkies down on the levee, picking all that cotton and singing praises to the master. Mm -hmm. They've not changed at all. They're never very optimistic. All one's got to do is listen to Swing Low Sweet Chariot and ask yourself what that song's about. Or try to li really listen to what Ray Charles is really telling you. We have lived under these intolerable conditions for how many years? Nearly 400 years. We have evolved a certain kind of style to meet it. And it also overlooks another very important thing. Perhaps I don't think that this republic is the summit of human civilization. Perhaps I have another sense of life. And perhaps I know more about you and your institutions than you know about me. And perhaps I have a judgment on them. Perhaps I don't want what you think I want. And that there's nothing you can give me. Perhaps there is something that I can give you. You can face, in some ways, the discontent of white people when they rise, they are heroes. But you know, when the Israelis pick up guns or the Poles or the Irish or any white man in the world mm -hmm. says, give me liberty or give me death, the entire white world applauds. When a black man says exactly the same thing, word for word, he is judged a criminal and treated like one, and everything possible is done to make an example of this bad nigger so they won't be any more like him. They need us to pick the cotton, and now they don't need us anymore. And now they don't need us, they're gonna kill us all off, just like they did the Indians. And I can't say it's a Christian nation. They were, your brothers will never do that to you because the record is too long and too bloody. That's all we have done. All your buried corpses now begin to speak. I can't depend on the American moral credit to save some of the people whom I love. But you don't have that moral credit. This is not an accusation. It is a plea for the life of this country. Because no matter what I say, no matter what Martin said, the despair in the ghetto, the despair throughout the country accumulates with every hour. Now, in fact, I, I don't think anything in, you know, in, the, uh, in the black ferment of the black revolution really involves revenge or, or, or is vindictive at all. You know? It is the white imagination, the guilty white imagination, which makes, which makes this out of it. And it's this, it's this which paralyzed us in all our social activities. You know, it's the reason why no one's done anything about the labor unions, you know, the schools, the, the situation of the people in the ghetto, nothing about the police, who are a very real menace to every black cat alive in this country. And no matter how many people say, you know, you're being paranoid when you talk about police brutality, I, I know what I'm talking about. I survived those streets, those precinct basements. I know, and every black cat in this country knows what the policeman is really like, and furthermore, I'll tell you this, I know what it was like when I was really helpless, how many, how many beatings I got. And I know what happens now because I'm not really helpless, but I know, too, that if he doesn't, if I haven't got the presence of mind, you know, to do whatever I have to do, he doesn't know that this is Jimmy Baldwin and not just some other nigger. He's gonna blow my head off just like he blows off all the other, everybody else's head. And this is done with the will of the state, and it can, uh, this cannot be overstated. Mm -hmm. It can happen to my mother in the morning, to my sister, to my brother. It's only now beginning to be born on you since it's happening to your heroes. And I'm not talking about individual policemen, and no doubt Nixon loves his children. I'm talking about the structure for which these people work. Yes. Policemen in the ghetto are not there, no matter what liberal newspapers may say. I'm not there to protect my life. They're there to protect your property.